Welcome back to the hottest show in the galaxy. It's the Karen Hunter Show. We're here on Sirius XM Urban View Channel 126. And every day I have to pinch myself because I get to sit in a room with greatness. I get to talk to some of my heroes. And today is no different. Let me welcome to the show. You may know him from Omar in The Wire. You may know him from Bessie. I know him as Chalky White from uh, Boardwalk Empire. Cold as dudes. And there was a scene in 12 Years a Slave. Mm -hmm. Just one scene that you freaking took over the whole entire, I sat down, I was like, this brother is amazing. Let me welcome to the show, Michael K. Williams. Oh, man, thank you for having me, Karen. Thank you. Let me just say, um, ah, your your meteoric rise, right, <laughs> is unlikely. You know, you sitting fast. here right now, unlikely, right? Yeah. Um, this is not what you came out the womb to do, but, no, so, but you probably did come out the womb. Tell, tell us a little bit about your journey before we talk about this project you're doing with Ava DuVernay. Oh, uh, well, for me, um, I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, and um, I found the arts, I should say the arts found me um, a little late in life. I started on a quest to become a background dancer. I was around 23 years old. Um, I was, um, you know, struggled in my in my teen years with addiction, and I was just starting to you know get my head together. I got a job, went to college, and um, here comes Janet Jackson with Rhythm Nation, and I, my light bulb went off, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna quit school. I'm gonna quit work. Wait, time, time out, time out. So, so what, you were watching the Rhythm Nation video, mm -hmm. and you decided you were just gonna what? Go um, up to Janet or what? Like, what was the plan, Michael? You just said it. I was going to go up to Janet and be like, I want to be one of your dancers. Can you take me on the road with you? I, like, I, but it was, it wasn't, I didn't have the concept of like, I'm going to go on the road or go to work for you. The video, um, it struck a chord in my heart. You know, um, it, it was a call to action. If you remember the, the top of the of the Rhythm Nation song, She's she's saying she's as she's coming down the elevator. She said, "We we are a, a, we are a, a, a people bound together by our beliefs. We are um we are looking towards a world rid of color lines." I don't feel I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, but those things were said. And then the imagery she was powerful and strong. She wasn't um selling sex, and you know everybody was different sizes, different colors, and they all looked like one. But the 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 real catch was. If you remember Tyrim Turner, he was the young boy who was like, you know, like kind of looking on at them at the third, third eye, looking at them dancing in the in the warehouse. And think about that. There was this dark skinned little boy by himself lost in a dark, damp warehouse. My life felt like that. And and I gravitated to what she represented in, in the music and with her imagery. And it just um it woke up the artist in me. Mm. So they say you always need a catalyst, like even a big bang. Yeah. You need a catalyst, <laughs> yeah. right? And so that was it. So what trajectory did that take you on? Because you, did you get to dance with Janet immediately? No, never even I never, never got to even meet Miss Jackson. Well, Wait, pause. Yeah. Janet Jackson, I know you're listening. I hope she this is. This has to happen. A little happy birthday. Has, yes, actually, yes. This has to happen. Okay. So w this took you on a path, but how did you you know i um yeah i went out to become a dancer and uh it was um you know about three of about about three to four years into my i guess you would call it a career what so what was the first thing you were in oh well the first thing i ever danced for uh, i was dancing for was uh, her name was a uh, uh, Izora, she was the, the one of the one of the two weather, tons of fun. Yes, ma'am. Oh, weather girls. The other so girls. they started out as two tons two of fun. fun. Yeah, with Sylvester. Yeah, it's Sylvester. And they turned to the weather girl. We exactly. have a certain uh, era. Yeah, we know. We, we know, know the music, music too. To Sylvester. Yes. yes. You made me feel. I like <laughs> there you go. Can't see. Can I look. Okay. Let's just show me. the role. Come on. There we go. We could do this. Go ahead. So anyway, she was my first <laughs> artist I was scheduled to dance for, and uh, during the rehearsal for the uh, the little tour, I was going to go on with her is when I got a uh, cut in my face. So um, that tour didn't happen. Pause. You, I mean, I, we all know the story, but some of us don't. Because, you know, when we see you on the screen, your scar is part of the character, whatever you're playing. You know, it, it fits the roles that you play. But this is a real scar. Yes, ma'am. Right. So tell us what happened. On my 25th birthday, um, I was... Uh, November 22nd. Yeah, November 22nd. Yeah, on my 25th birthday, I was um, drinking which is um, not my best side. And uh, I, I entertained a conversation that I probably would not have had I been sober. And uh, it resulted as these two cuts on my face. 
So I didn't go in that. Was that a box cutter? Or? Yes, he had a yeah. raise in his mouth, actually. Oh, that right. 5%? Was it 5%? I, I, I don't need to do I got, you know, I got wilded on, actually, oh, you know, to, to talk about, you know, the, where, you know uh, when they see us. This was, I got wilded on, and, I, and on top of that, I got caught slipping. I was drinking, and I was out in the street in Queens, and, you know, it was a perfect storm. And, um, you know, I went through a little depression with that. I, I For some reason, though, the arts kept... Um, it kept me. It kept me sane. It kept me focusing on something outside of what was going on in my real life in my community, and um, I kept dancing. I went on to dance for Crystal Waters, Technotronics. Wow. Um, um, with C. C. with, this, you, with this, the scar, with the scar, CC Pennington. Um, um, which Kim one? Sims. What, did you did you tour, you tour with CC? I saw, I toured with CC. I toured with Kim Sims. I wow. toured and I choreographed the Crystal Waters Hundred Percent Pure Love video. I toured with. Uh, 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 which got parodied on Living Living Color, right? Well, that was that was a, a Gypsy Woman, oh, her first okay. single, her first hit, and I came along on her second album. So I did all of that post the scar, and um, one day I get a phone call, and um, apparently Tupac Shakur, the late great Tupac Shakur, he had seen a, a Polaroid of me and saw that I had this scar, and in his words, he told the director Julian Temple, "Go find this dude." He looks thugged out enough to play the role of my little brother in this movie. And um, that happened, and I did. And that kind of, you know, gave me the, the bug of, of acting. And boy, are you a great actor. Um, Thank you. Sterling K. Brown um, says that you bring yourself to every role. Like, great actors, you, you're bringing a part of you. You can find yourself in whatever the role is. So I'm imagining when I see Omar, when I see Chalky White, or in this case, you're playing... The role of, and I, I don't know what role you are playing. I know the story because I was here for it. I the played, Central Park uh, it's, it's Joggers. Called, it's the Central Park Five story, but the name of it is called When They See Us. And I play Bobby McCray. He's the father of Antron McCray. Antron, okay. And and for people who don't know, um, in the 1980s, um, a jogger, uh, investment banker, white woman, yes, was ma jogging in Central Park, which uh -huh. is a famed Central Park, and she was brutally beaten and raped. Yes, brutally. Brutally, yeah. brutally, in a coma for, you know, ever, mm -hmm. and people thought she was going to die. Yes. And they rounded up these um, five young men, mm -hmm. young, yeah. we're boys. talking about 15, 16, 17 year old boys. No, they were 14, 13, 14. 14. Only one was actually 15. And he turned six. That was Corey Wise. Corey he Wise. He turned sixteen during the sentence, during the trial. Okay. So that time it came time for sentencing. He, they they tried him as an adult. You remember this case as a New Yorker, yes, don't, don't yes, you? Because do. it was it was a nationwide case. But if you were in New York at this time, it mm -hmm. was it split it split the city. You know, you had Donald Trump taken out as calling for their death. Uh, and that was real in, in New York newspapers. It was very divisive. Very divisive. Very. Uh, calling for their death before they were even tried. Tried. And these kids didn't have their parents with them when they were um, um, interrogated. In, right. In these and that's what I want to speak to. You, you know, it wasn't like they didn't care, didn't want to be there. Our communities, my community, we were, were very uninformed. We were, I mean, we're talking 30 years ago. It was really uninformed. And we still are today. You know, I don't even know what all my rights are. We're talking about, you know, working parents. Well, 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 well my son, no, no, come on. Like we, no, I can't, no, not my boy, whatever, whatever. We're not, we're not even, we, we're so busy. We're so consumed with just trying to put food on the table. We don't think about that. We're not thinking about, oh, maybe I should get a lawyer. We don't got the money for no lawyer anyway. Right. Right. And then, we, I mean, like going back to Bobby McCray, he didn't even have the knowledge to know that it's illegal to have my son in his room with you and I'm not one of his parents not being there. They when they said leave us alone with your son, we let we let it happen. Right. Right. And how and, and we're intimidated we're into, by a legal like, system of, that has us under their yoke. Yes. You know, we are yeah, we're yeah. literally oppressed by a legal system. Literally. We're talking about police in the streets or the court system. Yes. You know, why some of us, so many of us plea bargain because we're afraid to go and actually defend ourselves in court. And you know you know what replaces that, Karen? Knowledge. We, we, you know, the way for me, at least the way that I ensure that I respect what these men went through and survived is by doing my part to ensure that it never happens again, at least not in my community, not on my watch. And the way that I do that is by informing myself first, how, what happened? What went wrong? What did the parent, what, because I'm a parent now, what did they do wrong as a parent back then? You know what I mean? And it was lack of information, yeah. lack of knowledge, coupled with the fear it made them make bad choices and, and um, 
It resulted so, in this. So the boys were convicted. Yes. Convicted. Um, and I got to sit with Kyrie Wise after he got out. And Corey. His, Corey. Uh, yeah. Well, it's K-H-A-R-Y, isn't it? Well, he pronounced it Corey. Okay. All right. Uh, and, and he was so damaged. I sat on a panel with him. And I was sitting there imagining 15, 16 years old going to jail as a rapist. Mm -hmm. Rapists get treated a certain way yes, in they prison. Do. Yes, they do. And you were convicted of it. So there's no reason. Ra rapists and, are and, and that's, you know, with my quotation fingers for the listeners, he pleaded guilty. Right, you know? right. And he was a boy. He was a boy. And he, you can feel the damage. You can feel the destruction of this soul that d didn't get a chance to grow up and will never be right. But, you know, but having said that, though, I, I spent a lot of time with those men. Corey's a warrior. Make oh, no, 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 no doubt. He's a warrior. No doubt. Strong, strong spirited. And he's, and you know what makes him, in my eyes, what makes him so strong is the fact that he's still able to be vulnerable and, and, and transparent and smile like he beat the odds. Mm. His, his, he's, he's really humbling to be around. No, he, for yeah, sure. He really sure. is. Um, I got to spend time with it because uh, I was a reporter at the Daily News at the time. Wow. So um, Sharon, um, Youssef Salam's mom, we and, I, and I, the frustration because I was in my, you know, I was in my 20s. And what, what, I, was can I want to ask you a question. Sure. You were a reporter for the Daily News at the time. Yeah. What was you, what was like for you as a black woman going to work? What, what, what was the temperature in the office? That's office? why it was on fire. Mm. And so I'm out in the streets trying to, you know, so I made a, you know, connection with Yusuf's, Yusuf's mom. Mother. Yes. And she was, you know, adamant. She knew her, better. She had a little, she had a little knowledge. No, she was, yeah, she, she was, better. she was a sharp woman. Yes, she was. But yes, I, she is. I couldn't help her, you know, and, and. Why though? Why? As a, because you're under a system and, you know, in your 20s, you're and I was just saying I had this conversation. I was on a panel recently and I said, you know, you come in, you're, you're trying to make your way in this as a journalist. Yes. It's a system where there's not many of us in the newsroom. Mm, come on, sit, talk, talk. The editors send you out to get a story that they already in their mind know what it is. So you have to either follow, follow the lead. I'm new. I'm not like, you know, a veteran where I have. Later on down the line with Amadou Diallo, I got to flex a little bit. But I'm like in this cup game Which like happened three, in my community. Years. I used to right. go to that club, Club Rendezvous. Wow. That's on Flatbush Avenue between Farragut and Glenwood. Yeah. Amadou Damn. Diallo. I mean, yeah. Club yeah. yeah. New York New York is so so I'm out there and a woman is telling me that her son is in, innocent and you know, it's, they're going through the trial and we're trying to, you know, tell the tell her story. So the only thing I could do was tell her story. But now I look back, I probably could have done so much more. So you feel like, you know, on some level, the, the, the job of a journalist is, is so much greater than we give it credit. You know, at the time I was chasing, trying to get put on, you know, get my byline in the paper. And, so honest you know, of you. And, and, and a lot of us that came from that community that looked like us, we have a part to play in that. You know, we, you know I, I, I tell people, you know, my part to play in it, even though I, I didn't, I'm not from Harlem, I wasn't there when it happened. However... Those young boys had they've been more big brothers and mentors in the community. It probably would have been helped them to make a better decision than going to the park at, at night. Right, you, you right. Know, you know, we wildin, need, whatever. Wild, That's what they call them. Wild, wildin. wild pack of wool. I remember the headlines because yeah. I'm sitting in there and I'm like these headlines yeah. are crazy. No, but then, you know, that was real. Yeah. It was going on. It was going. Right. It was going down in the streets in New York. I, I, again, I'm a victim of wildin. These, these, you know, I got jumped by a gang of dudes. It was one of us spit a razor and cut me and mauled my face open. Wildin. You know, and, and I, I was prey because I was out there drunk. Right, you know what right, I mean? right. So, so, um, but these boys were not drunk. They weren't, they just you went just, out to go play. Right. Running the right. streets. Running the streets. You know, when I was coming up, the street light comes on, my ass better be in the house. You know, there was well, at least in front of the window. <laughs> You're right. a female, so you had to go No, upstairs. I gotta be in the house. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, you know, the, the the codes, you know, and you're right. If we had a stronger net, first of all, there would have been lawyers. There would have been a phone call. There would have been, you know, and so, a community so around for, them. So I love that you said that community around them. So for me, right, um, I can't focus too much on what they did. What the what what because we know that the police department they have a in New York City, but particularly to this case, they have a lot to to account for. We know that that there's no debating that, and I, I'm not even going to waste my energy on waiting for that. That, deep, that for that apology, so to speak, right? However, what I can do is, is make sure that it never happens again in my community and on my watch. And so when, when you say that, you know, the, for me, the way to honor these five men, what they've been through and what they what they survived is by, the, the worst way to, 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 to stay in their legacy 
would be to take our rage and our anger and our pain and turn it into a narrative of us against them, meaning uh, us, the community against the police department. Right, right, because that doesn't serve us. It won't, and it won't work. Right. It won't serve us and it won't work. That will fail miserably, actually. So, again, it goes back to informing ourselves as a community, like you said, and 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 and... You know, we talk about the media. I love that you were just honest about that because the media was also a huge culprit. You know, at least today we have um, uh, video cameras and 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 uh, social media to tell our narrative to speak out against and get and get a generate a generation type of like you know a, you know voice right. for that advocate for us. They didn't even have no, that. No, no, so and, and you're doing is, the bidding of a corporation yeah, or an editor, which was, that which has, was yeah. in your situation. Yeah. It was hard, so we all had a part to play in that. You know, and and the way that we, we, again, we honor that is by ensuring that it doesn't happen again. The way to do that is by informing ourselves, getting involved back with our community. And let's let's not dance around the bush. There needs to, you know, our kids, our young people that are adolescent, that are on the fence, that are at risk, whatever you want to call it, in marginalized neighborhoods, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, they need a big brother. They need a mentor. Right, and so we they need, need to, a catalyst a, like you had something, something that's going to spark something in them to do something productive. Amen, that's amen. It. So I, I call that's my that's my dog whistle for a call to action. I can't, you know, and and you know, yeah, and and, and dare I say this too, the corny as it sounds, sister. Another way to make sure this never happens again, we as a community, we have got to make more time to be involved with our local community leaders and hold them accountable. All the cops in our community are not bad. There's some good cops out there. We need to make it our responsibility to get to know them. Had those families had a relationship maybe with a police officer that patrols the community that does They would have been like, nah, they 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 wild, but they us. didn't right. Yeah, could right, vouch right, for right, them. Right. That's we're living in that time. I'm not I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but that it is what it is, right? And so Listen. we have to use our tools that, that that's in our community. But the tool there are tools there. The the you know, like I, today now you know, I advocate. I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for the Innocence Project. I educate myself. I go to these corny, corny uh, uh, town hall meetings that Chief Jeff Madry asked me to come to. That's my brother. He's chief of police over North Brooklyn. I have a relationship with him. We do panels together. I see him care. So I, 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 I so lend my voice with him. Right. I show up for him. I don't, you know, you know I'd rather be on, on, a, on my couch, you know, watching the game. But when Chief calls me, I show up because it's my community. And, and that's just my part. Michael K. Williams. So you play Bobby McRae yes, in ma'am. the Netflix film When They See Us, which is about the Central Park uh, Five, but it's t- told through their eyes. It's through their eyes. And and we also tell the impact of what that case did to them and to their families mm. and to the relationships. You know, when you break down the family structure, man, it, we're very vul- it makes us very vulnerable. And that tore down family structures. But thank God, you know, they build back up because well, those, those men are strong and they're, and, they're, and they're brothers. Their conviction was overturned in 2002. Um, they also won a lawsuit. Uh, Kim Burns did a great um, documentary as well. Yes. Ava DuVernay um, took on this project. I knew she was, you know, I said, this is going to be something. When did you get the phone call to play this role of Bobby McRae? It was shortly after she and I met here at, at Sirius. Y'all met at Sirius XM? Yes, we Sirius did. Sirius XM brought y'all together. Yes, they did. Yes, y'all did, man. Shout out to us. <laughs> <laughs> she was coming out of out of a room. I, I think it might have been Sway. I was sitting there waiting to go in. She turns the corner. I'm sitting down just like I'm doing now. And when I see I'm dressed, come around the corner, I jump up and I grab her and I hug her. I, I was like, let me hug this queen, right? And I said, man, I love you. She said, man, I love you too. She said, yeah, you smell good. I love your energy. I just said that to you too. <laughs> he smells real good. What are you wearing? Oh, oh, he can't tell. Some yeah, special my, Michael K. My Williams. Spices mm-hmm. and the rice. Shout out yeah. to Jill Scott. Okay. You know? No, but uh, um, actually what I'm wearing is a, um, it's something my nephew made. It's all organic. It's called Perfect Blue Alchemy. He and his, uh, his, um, his uh, lady friend, they put together okay, a nice uh, natural What's their skincare. business? Perfect Blue Alchemy. You can go online. You can Google it. It's on Instagram. But um, Perfect Blue Alchemy, yeah, y'all. It makes Let's sense. All natural sense. Smells good. Thank and you, And they sister. can tailor it to your own yes. body chemistry? Oh, yep. Yes, they can. Because you, you, I've never smelled anyone that smells like you. Thank you. Mm, it smells good. Thank okay. You. So well, we met here. Right. Ava and I met here. And, uh, you know, um, and uh, that's, that, that, that started to spark. But when she called me for this, we sat down. We had lunch. And... Um, we talked about, you know, what it was like for me growing up in the city when it happened. What, what did I feel? And I, I, I talked about the fear. 
You know, that was the main yeah. thing that I remember. Yeah, because it was a turn to all, all black boys were kind of suspect. You're public enemy number yeah, one. because y'all are if rapists. dressed a certain way, right. rapists, yeah, we're wilding. You know, it was, we got we got lumped with a, 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 a energy that, could cost you your life yeah, in the wrong place. Yeah, we yeah. got we got generalized. All the young boys in my so I remember the fear, you know. And I remember we we talked about was she some Compton as you know. So it was was it really wilding or was it wilding out? I said no, no out, just 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 wilding. Are you sure about that? I said no, 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 no out, just just wilding. In fact, no D and no no L and no G, just wilding. You know? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> so we we debated that for a minute, but um. You know, we talked about life. We talked about, you know, what it is to be, um, you know, in this business. And, um, yeah, man, she, she is truly my shero. Um, she's a strong woman. She's um, she's smart. And I, I just really, I, the, the, the amount of respect that I have for her, I can just go on and on. Her, her, her eye. She's got vision for things. Like, she, she's telling stories. She's telling us, she's man. telling an impact. Just like you watch Janet Jackson, you know, music and art. They're here to to penetrate our soul so that we can how, act. How intuitive her eye is. So one scene, um, where you know, with Bobby, he's at work. He works in Midtown, and he's a he works in a parking lot, and he's on the phone with his wife, Miss Linda. And when he hangs up, he lies to her and tells her that he's gonna um, work a double, but that's the beginning of him drifting away from his family because he feels the guilt of what he did. Right, making his son sign that form. So me, the actor, when I go off and she films me, you know, I have a different. Michael has a different memory of Times Square, of Midtown. You know, is is you know I have my own relationship with that. So she says she stops. She goes, Michael, you know, that last take, it looked like you were going somewhere. I said, yeah, I did a lot of dirt around here. She goes, no, nah, I just don't. I don't want. I don't want to think he's going with. I don't. I don't want that. Just, just, just he just walks off. That's how in tune she was. You know, we had, um, we had, and then her. So you were all in your own head. Yeah, but I mean, going, it's, yeah, right. it's, 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 again, it, it happened in my city. This is, this is my life. I'm you born and raised it, right. on levels that Michael I. Michael K. Williams is. Yeah, you can't help it. But then she, um, she also, um, she had grief counselors on set. I don't know if you, if you know that they were, because the scenes were so heavy and the producers, the actors, crew, people were like breaking down. So at one point, her in the studio, Netflix, they decide to hold grief, grief counselors come to set. And um, there were a few times where it was asked if I was going to use them. I said, no, I don't got to. I got Ava, you know, because she was our counselor at times. She took on everybody's, she took on everybody. Everybody brought their oomph. And she she took it and she never saw not one dread get out of out of place. It was like, when it, you know, she 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 really drove that ship. Best role you've played so far? I don't know. I'll let you know when I do it. I'm still Come on, Omar. <laughs> like, so, so there was a challenge. I had never watched The Wire, all right? And I had Jamie Hector on. I had, had a bunch of people I've interviewed. Yes, and I never watched The Wire. Uh -huh. And because I'm like, I lived that. I don't need to watch that. I watched The... Uh, and The Wire's still going on. Let's face it. Right. I was mm -hmm. like, I don't need to have that in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And they were like, it's the best television ever. So, you, you know the story. You so, know. So I, over the and holiday... being a journalist, you definitely know. Yeah, I'm serious. You know. I know. So I binge watched it over the holiday season. Wow, and, you did? Yeah, because I made them watch The Color Purple, which I don't think was an even, uh, con you know, I don't think that was an even, that's two, three hours versus, you know, yeah, yeah, couple, seven, couple seven seasons. Yeah. And Malcolm X. Okay, so you had to watch two movies, Smith. Oh, all right, poor all right, you. Poor you. Poor you, right. So, but I watched it, and your character, you and Jamie Hector, Jamie Hector later for a different reason. But, did, what? When you got the script for that, this dude who is hardcore, Sort of shotguns, like, but there was a righteousness about Omar that you just root for him. Um, what did you think when you got the script, and did you decide I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do this, or was there ever a situation where you were like, okay, mm, I don't know if this is good for me? Never. The minute I read Omar, the minute it came across my mother's facts in the daycare, facts in the daycare Wait, how office, how long ago was that? Yeah, it came across <laughs> her facts line yeah, okay. in her office, in her daycare, in the project that she raised me in. When that facts came in, I read it. And um, wait, you were still living with your mother? You, no, you no, just we had, used we, her? You no, know, I had my own apartment. Okay. We all, we all, my mother, we all lived, we all grew up in the projects. And, and like when we left Mama's house, you just got your apartment in the projects. Oh, okay. you know, so, so y'all all kind yeah, of. We all, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, different and floors. Different or, floors, yeah. Okay. yeah some different, my brother had his own building when he got married, but he he ended up coming back to the building. It, it was, you know, Big Mama's house. But okay. the, How many brothers? Because you got one as a makeup artist. 
what, what? that's not my blood brother. Okay. No, 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 no. That's Derek Kolak. Okay. No, me and him grew up shout together. Out to shout out to shout, shout to Derek Kolak. Shout out to Bree Boy Projects. You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, um, no, um, there's I'm the last of ten. You know, there's four bo- six okay. boys and four girls, and um, I came eight years after my last brother. Okay. So, so, so you and your mama are close. Yeah, we're very yeah. close. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a mama's boy. She raised me with a strong, strong Caribbean hand. But uh, yeah, so I got, I got the Bahamas, okay. Nassau Bahamas. Yeah. Nice. So, so how'd you get caught up with uh with drugs, with drugs and yeah. everything? You know, addiction don't got no, uh, uh, you know, has no, 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 no discrimination. I know, but like to, to try it though, you know, you like, know, um, like I know I alcoholism was, runs in my family. That's not mm-hmm. why I don't, I don't drink, you know. Not, but I know it's there. I, it Gina, could be there. It, it I, mean, be, I don't want to wake it up. No, so let's why not would play you? around yeah. with it, right? You yeah. know, you see people on drugs. I don't want to be that person. So you well, know. yeah. Well, when I was growing up, you know, the the people that I saw on drugs, they were cool. That that's one thing. They were no, you know. Nobody was not in drooling. Well, no, it was more cocaine and crack, weed, alcohol. Those are the things that plagued um, my neighborhood in Brooklyn. There wasn't too many, um, what we say, heroin, heroin addicts. <laughs> you know, around. That was more of an uptown thing, dare I say. You know, um, but my thing was, um, I had two things working against me. I had a very, very low self-esteem, and I had a very, very huge need to be accepted. And um, those things didn't go well together. We mixed that with dark skin. And, okay. and awkwardness. Yeah, because it's like regular, now, regular right. adolescence. Right. It's just you know, um, in a in a community that didn't celebrate you for being sensitive. Mm. I, you know, very sensitive. You know, ironically now that's why I make <laughs> my living right. no, <laughs> from being sensitive and vulnerable. But um, it was painful growing up, and I, so drugs gave me a. It was a it was a way to self 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 medicate. Yeah, that era was the light skin era. Yes, ma'am. Right, because I'm like, what's wrong? It, it, I mean, dark skin is winning right now. This is a T'Challa, you know, Black Panther, and all you know, like shout out, it, shout yeah, out to all the dark of that skin is brother, beautiful, Idris right? Elba, and, and Jamie Heck, the shout yes, out to my yes. brother. And we're and we're we're I think as a community, we're getting more um, aware that you know, natural and being ourselves, our full complete selves, is okay. But that's we're a process. Okay. It is, and it's a pro- and it's something like you know, we look again, we look at our. Our kids, man, you know, that's not community. People now after having gone through when we when they see us, there's there's no turning back for me. My my lights are fully on, my eyes are open, and you know, it's time for me to go home. And and it's I'm not giving back. I'm not like, oh you know, the 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 philanthropy. I don't like any of those titles, I don't like any of those airs, and I don't like any of those pats on the back. I'm doing the bare minimals. All I'm doing is going home. If I'm not giving, bringing my jewels, my gold, my, all my accomplishments, my knowledge that I've learned in all my 53 years of living, if I'm not bringing it back home to my kids, then what am I doing with it, right? So um, you know, when they see us has given me the, the final call to action to be, to, to not only go back to go home, but to, to, to make a pres- presence in my community, you know, much like the way Nipsey Hussle was doing in his, but you aspire to be like him. You want to live. You want to live. Amen. May thirty first. Yeah. When they see us, Michael K. Williams, Ava DuVernay, Netflix uh, piece on the five uh, Central Park Five. Can you come back? Cause you're you're in town, right? Yeah, I'm going to sit here with Whatever me. You need me sit. Whatever you need, girl. Ain't nothing but thing. College your bro. <laughs> Michael K. Williams, thanks for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, sis. And y'all check out, let's just keep clicking on the Netflix um, special. I mean, the the series. Just Mm -hmm. Just make it number one. I don't know how that works, but algorithms, they know how to do that. You just did it just there. They do. All right. When they see us, because they need to. This is Karen at the show. We'll be right back.